arrived in Mozambique to form part of the Southern African Development Community's standby force. This despite calls for the Defence Minister to focus her forces on South Africa's own attempted insurrection. On the line we have Darren Oliver, uh, he's the Director at Africa Defence Review. A very good morning uh, to you Darren and thank you so much for making the time. That counter argument that South African troops have their own uh, problems uh, to deal with, could South Africa have avoided involvement uh, in Mozambique? Good morning. It's a bit tough given that there are certain agreements uh, regarding being in Mozambique and the timing of it. Uh, we all thought that it might be delayed a little bit and there was some delay, but I think South Africa was faced with the problem of being unable to delay it much further unless it was to lose uh, control entirely of, of being part of the force. So it's a very difficult position to be in, given that the you know the army is of course extremely overstretched. It is deployed you know almost entirely in South Africa, uh, and so this is this is definitely a stretch. So it's definitely a cause for concern. That being said, this initial force at the moment uh, is really an advanced team. Uh, it's made up predominantly of special forces, and these are not generally the troops that you would deploy internally. So this at least is not necessarily, for the moment, replacing troops in South Africa. They're far more specialized troops and um, headquarters troops and all the rest. But uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely a concern, especially if it grows much, much, much larger, which um, clearly seems to be the case. Yeah. Really, are we overstretched? But just hold on to that thought before you answer, because I want to ask you that uh, the president, uh, Philippe News, is reporting that government forces are gaining ground. Uh, what can this be attributed to? Well, the, the arrival of the Rwandan force definitely helps a bit. Uh, it's not a very large force, but uh, it has been active for a bit, and it's, it's clearly had some effect in the areas it's deployed in. Uh, this is due to, I mean, amongst other things, they're fresh troops. They don't have many of the issues that, that plague the, the Mozambican forces, including low morale um, and, and all the rest. So that's clearly had an effect. Whether it's a long-term effect that can be sustained is an open question. Uh, so I, I don't believe that with this alone, uh, they'll be able to achieve much. Uh, I think they'll definitely still need to have the static forces there to, to, to be doing a much broader scale thing. Um, but it definitely seems to be a, a, a small uh, set of advances so far. Yeah. And, and just that about South African forces being stretched, uh, that's a scary prospect. Is that, does that mean that's all the capability we have? Yeah, well, right now we've pretty much deployed everything. So, I mean, the army is not that large. Uh, if you look at it, you know, there's only about 12 to 15,000 infantry troops in total. Um, so whatever's deployed now in Mozambique and deployed in South Africa, that's pretty much it. Uh, what they'll probably do as they increase the deployments in Mozambique is they'll start pulling some troops from South Africa. So we'll probably only see an increase in the size of the deployments in Mozambique from about the middle of August when the internal deployment starts to, to scale down. Uh, but yes, there, there, there's no spare capacity. This is the entirety of the army that is currently deployed. Yeah. I, I know you don't do political analysis, but I wonder what your thoughts are on this one. Uh, the economic freedom fighters uh, marking a milestone today, uh, their birthday. Um, but some of the analysis coming out from Julius Malema saying that a country that has to deploy forces to quell down its... Uh, it, it, it's members of the public, it's population. It's, it's a bit problematic in that it means you don't have buy-in from the public. What are your thoughts about this? So in the near term, there's no choice. Uh, you know, the police had effectively collapsed and the military had to be brought in, much as we don't, don't like it. So I think his near-term solutions were uh, very unrealistic. That being said, over the long term, yes, you don't want to have the military coming in all the time to rescue the police whenever something like this happens. Uh, it's bad for the police because it prevents them from being reformed. It's bad for the army because it blurs the lines between you know, uh, the policing role and the military role, and it takes them away from their regular tasks. And it's bad for the public view of both because um, the public then loses faith in, in, in both the police and the army. So it's not a good thing long term, but short term, I don't see an alternative in this case. Uh, this was such a, a completely unprecedented level of, of, of violence and, 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 and looting that there really was no option, in my view. Yeah. So about the forces that have been deployed in Mozambique, what are the prospects of success? Is it a worthwhile excursion? 
It's a tough one because I think they are still very, very under-resourced. Um, it's not going to be a very large force. They don't have, uh, in my view, enough uh, air power, so enough uh, helicopters, uh, um, aircraft, and all the rest to support them. Um, so it is really going in on a shoestring budget, which is a, a risky endeavor, especially because this kind of operation requires a lot of mobility, and especially air mobility, being able to move around troops uh, quite rapidly around the area. So, uh, you know, it's tough to say. Plus, of course, you have the, the problems that the Mozambican government is trying to keep on a certain control, keep on having the FADM be in charge of, of the operations. And so far, they've proven to be I mean, extremely ineffective. So it's a tricky, tricky one. I don't say, well, I, I can't say that, that that's, success is guaranteed. Um, I do have faith, though, in the people that have been picked from the, the, the South African side to, to lead this and the kind of troops that are being involved. So they're probably given it the best chance it can have. Um, but everything depends on what happens at the, high, at the highest levels, what happens in terms of coordination between Mozambique, Rwanda, and South Africa and Botswana, and uh, how much uh, freedom these sort of forces are given to actually fulfill their mandate. Of course, it's a story you're watching. We'd like to talk to you some more in the future as we watch the story unfold. Perfect. Thank you. Darren Olifiru is a director at the African Defense Review, talking to us about that uh, uh, deployment of South African troops as part of a broader uh, SADC uh, contingent in Mozambique.